Don't buy a 12 volt fridge until you've watched this video. We're going to cover the important factors to consider when you are picking out a fridge, packing a fridge, securing a fridge, and using a fridge. If you're new here, my name is Nathan Mueller. Welcome to Outdoor Auto. The entire goal of this channel is just to help automotive enthusiasts get out and explore the great outdoors. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, so the number one mistake that I see people making when they're buying a 12 volt fridge is they go way too big. This thing has its own cooling, so you don't need to put ice in it. So if you're used to packing like a giant Yeti cooler and then filling a third of it with ice to keep your stuff cold, well, you have a lot more room in these. So for example, this is APL 55. The 55 is telling us that this has 55 liters of space. Um, that's what this one's measured in. Some coolers are measured in liters and some are in quarts, depending on where they're made. So this one's 55 liters, which translates to about 58 quarts. If I compare this to like a Yeti cooler that you're probably familiar with, like the Yeti 75 cooler, which is about six inches longer than this, uh, that one has 75 quarts of usable space. You can actually store just as much food, probably even a little bit more food in this than you can in that because you don't have to have ice in it. If you are a weekend warrior, you could easily camp out of this. Even I can, even with a family of five. When I go on a really long trip, like I'll do trips down to Baja where we maybe travel for two weeks straight, I still use my smaller 12 volt fridge, but on those I actually do bring a secondary cooler that I keep in the back of my truck. And all I do is I use the freezer section of this to, to freeze two, two ice packs that I switch out every day into the other cooler. And then I'm able to maintain that secondary cooler the whole entire trip without ever stopping for ice. Now, obviously, if space is not an issue or you have a much bigger family or you regularly go on these very, very long trips, maybe a bigger one is right for you. But just it's an important thing to think through before you go and drop the money that is a 12 volt fridge. Some fridge companies come with a built in battery in the fridge and some don't. Me personally, I don't really think you need the ones with a built-in battery. Here's the reason. If you're getting a 12 volt fridge and you're going on these long trips, more than likely you're also taking some kind of battery pack already. And your battery pack likely has a solar panel and will charge off your car when you're driving. There's not really a need to carry this semi-heavy battery as well as another semi-heavy battery in here. Most of the, uh, the 12 volt fridges that have a built-in battery in, in like normal hot conditions, if this is in the back of your truck or inside of your vehicle when you're camping, it doesn't even have enough power to power it for let's say 24 hours if it's, if it's actually needing to run quite a bit. Because the batteries that go on these are usually like 100 watt hour batteries, whereas this is like a 1,024 watt hour battery. So if you're going to go where you want a battery backup to run this for several days, let's say you like to go and you camp at one spot and then you don't move camp for three days. So your car isn't going to be running. Well, that's where you get a battery pack like this with a solar panel. You're totally good. On top of that, you can charge phones and drones and cameras and flashlights and all the other stuff. When I, when I go on those really, really long trips down to Mexico, I can run this the entire, I can run my fridge off of this the entire time. And I'll, all I have to do is be able to pay attention that when I'm driving, that these are both plugged in and charging and or running. And then when I'm not driving, I just switch this over to a solar panel and I've been able to keep up no problem. Uh, this fridge is an Iceco one. When you open it up, it actually has LED lights inside of it that light up. So if it's nighttime and you're trying to grab stuff out of your cooler, you're not just rum like rummaging around in the dark. Um, so I do like the ones that have lights. The lights on this just automatically turn on when you open it up and automatically turn off. Get one with lights, it ends up paying because more often than not, I feel like I'm cooking dinner at night once it gets dark. Another thing that you need to think about is the orientation of where you're going to put this. See this one right here has the long door that opens from this side and goes the full length this way. So if you stick it in the back of your truck on like one of those sliders that pulls out, this orientation of door can be kind of nice to be able to access the whole entire fridge in one shot. Um, however though, 
if you store it where you're attacking the fridge coming from this angle, then it's nice to have the door that opens up on this way. So like Iceco, for example, makes fridges that have both orientations. They have the long door from this side that's on this APL series, but then they have a whole different series that opens this way. And some of them will have two doors for the different zones. So you need to figure out where it's gonna be in your car and where it's most convenient. My last fridge that I had had the two doors here, which seems really cool, but it turns out specifically where I store it in my truck, inside of my truck in the back seat, it actually didn't work good because it was super easy to get to that first compartment and then it was really hard to get to the second compartment. So plan accordingly, get the right orientation of door for where you're ultimately going to secure it in your vehicle. Do you need to pick out a fridge that has this extra thermal layer? So this is an accessory that goes on your fridge. This fridge is actually stainless steel underneath all of this. I'll show you that in just a second but it has a thermal layer that helps this fridge be more efficient. I think that comes into play a lot if you mount this in the back of your truck and you don't have a canopy or anything. So just direct sunlight is glaring on your fridge all the time. It will probably be a good idea to, to get this. Um, I mean, the other added advantage of this case is it gives you all the pouches here and on the back and on the side for all your extra cables and everything like that to help keep you organized. Um, so that's kind of nice, but for somebody like me who mounts this in the back seat of my truck, and then when I'm staying in a place camped for a long time, I usually crack my windows so it doesn't get that hot in there. Um, in my case, I actually tend to not use it with it mounted in the, the back seat of my car uh, because it actually makes it a little slower to open uh, because you have is you have four different Velcro areas. You end up Velcroing this, you end up unvelcroing this, and you open it. It's not a big deal. This is like arguing over like splitting hairs, but I can get into it a little bit quicker with the inside of my car where it's not usually hot anyway. So you just have to figure out where you're gonna be storing your actual fridge and decide whether it applies to your application. Okay, so here's some quick tips on packing your fridge. Number one thing I like to tell people is pack your fridge before you leave at least the night before you leave, plug it in inside of your house and get it down to temperature before you throw it in your vehicle. The big reason is when you're cooling this down for the very, very first time, all the way down to whatever temperature you have it set at for your vegetables or your food. By the way, this one actually inside of it right here has a handy little chart and it tells you what temperature to cool it down for different types of food. So when this cool down process happens, if you're starting this from being very warm, throw it in your car and throw it on a battery, it's gonna use a lot of power to get down to temperature. So I always get it down to temperature in the house first, and then I don't get behind on any of my batteries or anything like that. One other trick is empty space in a cooler is harder to keep cool than space that has something. So if you only end up using a tiny bit of space in this, Sometimes I will just put water bottles in it just to take up the other space because once that water is cooled off, it's a lot easier to keep it cool than to just have it be air space. These are small spaces in here. And when you're trying to pack stuff, if you're stacking things on top of each other, you're digging down to the bottom a lot. So eggs get broken a lot of times inside of your fridge from all that rummaging. The, I mean, the two things, you can obviously get those plastic cases that, that protect each egg. Um, those are awesome. The other option is a lot of times I just pre-crack like two dozen eggs into a Tupperware because I'm usually making scrambled eggs anyway. I get it. You can't have a normal fried egg then, but uh, I just pre-crack them into a Tupperware, throw the Tupperware in there, and I just use that to pour out of it. Um, then I don't ever have to deal with broken eggs leaking throughout the whole entire cooler. That gets really gross really fast. Okay, so now let's talk about securing your fridge. And this is also a consideration that you need to take when you're buying a fridge. This fridge, for example, has areas for tying it down all over the place. And that's really important. Whether you put this in the back of the bed of your truck or you're putting it in your back seat, if you get in a car crash, you don't want this thing to turn into a you know 70 pound missile and smashing people and hurting people or like in the interior of your car, nobody thinks of it, but if you did happen to roll your vehicle, that's 70 pound chunk of metal rolling around in your car. 
So you need to secure it. There's lots of creative ways to do that. I take my back seats out. My back seat, you can take the whole thing out or you can take two thirds of it out. I take two thirds of it out. And when I take it out, I'm able to secure it to some of the areas where the actual seats would have bolted in. There's areas where you can put a strap through all of this. Like you can put a strap through the corner here. You can use the actual handles to secure it down. This one even has to where you can secure it straight over the top. I don't really like doing that because then you can't open it without taking your straps off but it even has stuff around the edge here. So there's all kinds of places to put tie downs on this that won't impede your ability to open and close your fridge. Okay, so another thing that you need to consider on where you're going to secure your fridge is how are you gonna get power to it? In the back of the bed of my truck, I've actually run power back there. But in order to do that, it's a real pain. I had to run power out of the cab. I had to take the bed off of my truck. I had to do run the cables, put the bed back on the truck and now I have 12 volt power in the back of my bed. A lot of the new Tacomas and Forerunners and, and even I think the new Tundra literally will have a 12 volt port already in the back, which is awesome. So if you're lucky enough to have one back there, great. If you don't, you might not wanna put it in the bed of your vehicle because it is kind of a pain to get power back there. And especially if you don't have a shell, let's say you just have like a rooftop tent on a metal rack, you can't leave one of these back there if you all of a sudden end up driving through a rainstorm or something. So in my case, I love to put it in the back seat of my truck. And like I said, we do a seat delete where we take, a lot of people just fold the seat up and then try to cram one in there. And then it makes it to where you can't really move your seat. It's super tight. So a lot of times you have a hard time getting to the doors. I, and I tell people they, they do that because they think it's hard to remove seats. It is not hard to remove seats from almost any vehicle on earth. I have a Ford right here. I've got a Toyota. I have, I don't know, I've used six different versions of Toyotas. When you go to remove the seats from a back seat of a car, it's usually four to six big bolts is all you have to take out and then the thing just simply lifts out. So check into how hard it is to remove your seats, give yourself plenty of room for your actual fridge and other things back there. I think that that's one of the best ways to go. Then you're usually gonna have some kind of 12 volt port within your car that you can plug this into. One other cool thing about this is it has pass-through power. So when you're on 12 volt power on this side plugged into it, if you need to plug something else in, it has like USB ports that you can use to, to plug into and power other stuff. So if it takes away your power for one thing, it, it gives you other power options. It's a cool feature. Okay, so finally, a couple cool things to understand about when you actually use the fridge. It's almost a wash on how much they weigh, which is kind of impressive because this thing has a compressor and a bunch of other stuff, right? But by the time you account for the entire weight, this thing weighs 50, like three pounds, I believe, 54 pounds, something like that. A Yeti cooler, a 75 liter cooler by itself weighs 33.4 pounds. Then you have to, if you're doing two bags of ice, that's an additional 14 pounds. So they come within just a couple pounds of each other already. It is a more efficient use of space, and now you don't have to pull over and get ice all the time. So to try to compare pricing really quick, this is about, this one will fluctuate depending on sales between you know, 900 and something dollars. I'll put the link below so you can click on it and check the current price. In fact, Iceco uh, sent this fridge to me to test and they actually gave me a 12% off coupon. So I'll put that down below for you guys as well if you're interested in checking out any of their fridges. But in this case, this fridge compared to like the 75 liter Yeti, which means you're comparing two that can hold about the same amount of groceries once you account for ice, a, a 12 volt fridge costs about twice as much. So. Yes, it's definitely more expensive, but now you're never having to buy ice ever again, and you're saving yourself a lot of time doing that, and you now have a fridge and a freezer option. So that's the way you gotta think about it. If you're, if you're trying to understand, is it worth it to own one of these? For some people, they will absolutely say, yes, it is. Other people will say, no, I have no problem ice camping, I've been doing it for years. Another cool thing about these coolers is, the, this is like a Bluetooth connected cooler. So you're able to look on your phone and always know like what's the temperature of your food? Did any of it go bad? Did any of it spoil? 
um, when you have like a traditional cooler, I always remember it was like you're getting down to like day four and you open your cooler and you can see like three pieces of ice still floating and there's a bunch of cold water in there and you're like, I don't know, is my food still good or is it starting to go bad? The beautiful thing of this is you can just check the temperature on your phone anytime you want. You can check it on the panel anytime you want. So obviously there's a little more food safety when you're actually running a real refrigerator rather than just a pack of ice. Okay guys, so what do you guys think? Should you buy a 12 volt fridge? I don't know your personal circumstances, so I'm not gonna tell you. In my case, long before Iceco even sent me this fridge for free, I had already bought one with my own money. I decided a long time ago that for me, camping with my family, they're totally worth it, and I love it. I love not being a slave to having to go to the gas station and picking up ice all the time, and also like the worry about food spoilage on longer trips. So for me, it's worth it. I'm very curious for you guys in the comments, is it worth it for you? Some of you guys have perfected the art of cooler camping with dry ice and all these different things. And, and for you guys, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. For you, it's like, nah, it's totally not worth it, or it is. Uh, have, have any of you guys had your mind changed where you went camping with somebody that had one and all of a sudden you're like, you know what, that's so convenient. Maybe I'm done with my dry ice days. Uh, so yeah, I'm super curious to hear from you guys. But regardless, I wanted to make sure that if you ever do buy one, you at least have these tips and you can save some money getting the right one for yourself the first time rather than going through two or three before you figure out what's right for you. I hope this video was helpful. If it is, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys on the next one.